Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes, and today we're going to continue on with some diabetic emergency stuff, guys. And this is part three, and talking about DKA, or that diabetic ketoacidosis, uh, the hyperglycemic patient, which is a little bit different than your hypoglycemic patient, right? Because the signs and symptoms are different when it comes to these patients, okay? Um, and, of course, before I get into that, I like to talk about why this stuff is important. And every week, I try to say that it's important not just to pass your exams. Right? It's also great to build your knowledge base, to let you make better clinical decisions, write better reports, interact more effectively with other healthcare providers, okay? So, yeah, it does give you that key information, those key focus points you'll see quite often on exams, right? And of course, my hope is it's going to motivate you to uh, research a little bit more, look into the topic more if you're not quite getting what I'm talking about on these key points, okay? That's why this is quick. They're Monday minutes, not the Monday hour, which you could pretty much do on diabetic emergencies, right? Especially if you drill down into the DKA stuff, okay? So we talk about DKA, guys, and, you know, this is that person that has inadequate insulin circulating in order to control their blood sugar levels, okay? Um, The blood sugar level end up rising, fatty tissue breaks down, it forms those ketones, those ketones and the keto acids, right? You get the changes in blood and the acid-base balance. Patients might have that frequent uh, urination, dehydration, right? Uh, loss of electrolytes like potassium, and then the whole chain of events starts to go downhill for that patient, okay? Um, This takes a little bit longer, right? It's not as acute as a hypoglycemic patient. A lot of times this will start with an infection, or maybe they've taken too little insulin, right, too often to kind of trigger it, okay? Um, So, Again, this is the type of thing when you assess your patient, you're looking for things that have been ongoing. This isn't sort of an acute type thing, okay? Um, So some of the signs and symptoms you'll see with these types of patients are basic stuff you'll see in a lot of diabetic patients, right? The weakness, uh, nausea, vomiting. Um, You'll have them complaining of abdominal pain. Again, we talked about the increase in urine output, right, the polyuria or the polydipsia, where you're talking about the increase in thirst, they get very thirsty, they want to drink a lot, okay, also one of the main signs there, your altered level of consciousness, right, um, rapid weak pulses, uh, your, that fruity acetone sort of smell on their breath, okay, um, you know, always get this, but it, it is something you will see on these patients, okay, um, me personally, I'm not very good when it comes to the smells of EMS, um, unless you talk about things like uh, uh, gangrene, that really triggers me, since a side note there, but other smells, I'm not, I, I've never been one to really pick up on it, so I don't rely on that for myself when I'm assessing diabetic patients that I might think might be hyperglycemic or in DKA, right? But so you don't always see that. So don't rely on that as like a, a major rule out uh, sign or symptom, okay? Um, blood pressure could be normal or it could be high. And look for them to have a rapid but a weak pulse. And then, of course, we talk about things like cosmal respirations, okay? Um, a lot of times that could be a big trigger what you'll see with patients that are that are, have that altered level of consciousness, uh, not very, very lethargic, okay? Um, And you'll see that. I actually have a video here I want to let you see, just kind of show an example of what uh, Cosmetic Reparations look like. Let's take a quick look. This came in from a a pediatrician's office. He's 10 years old. And the hear is breathing. This is uh, Guzmar breathing. This is the breathing that you see with diabetic ketoacidosis. He's a little bit altered. He's a little bit slow to wake up. So he's going to be pretty severe. He had some weight loss, and then he's been having some vomiting. 
No, no, this oh, is this new. Is this is new, oh, brand new. Gotcha. He's, 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 had, he's had no, he's had no prior do documentation for diagnosis of PKA or diabetes. I, I smell a little too fast. It's pretty small one. So you see just some example there, right, on what it might look like. I don't know if you picked up on that, um, but the doc was talking about how this patient in particular hasn't had a diagnosis of being diabetic, right? So what, we, what I just mentioned before, where it kind of can creep up, a long type thing going on. So this kid was probably not producing enough insulin and the sugar is rising, rising, rising in their body and nobody really picked up on it because he doesn't have a history of diabetes, right? So it got to a point now where now he's uh, lethargic, he's got a little altered mental status, and you got the cosmol breathing going on, right? So just some stuff to kind of keep in mind, guys. Use these clues. Be the clinician, okay? Um, you hear a lot of talk about having college degrees out there and stuff like that. That's great, but it's not going to help you unless you know signs and symptoms and being a clinician for your patient, okay? Um Guys, emergency care for DKA, not a lot we're doing for these patients besides monitoring them, right? Their airway, oxygen, IVs, uh, don't let them eat or drink anything, watch out for their shock, uh, see if they, they might go into shock, um, and again, transport, transport them and support their ABCs, right? The one thing that we can do in the field is start them on fluid boluses, okay? Um, depending upon your system, that could be 500 to 1,000 cc's or mLs of normal saline, right? Uh, some systems let you give up to 3,000, all right? Depends upon where you are. So, of course, follow your local guidelines when it comes to how much of a fluid bolus you can give. And in addition, we're not with them that long. They're going to get that much of a fluid bolus anyway um, most times. Uh, we're going to get maybe a 1,000 or so into them anyhow, okay? But get it going. Get the IV established. Get that fluid bol bolus going, okay? Because uh, this is a long time. They're going to need lots of fluid in order to get them out of this, okay? So that's the one thing we can do and that we can start and get it going, okay? Uh, other than that, like I said, most of our emergency care for these DKA patients is going to be support, monitoring that airway, oxygen, stuff like that, okay? Um, all right, so guys, that is it for the DKA. I hope you're getting something out of these Monday Minutes, guys. Um, I hope you engage with me. Uh, go check me out on any of these social media channels. I'm on Facebook at The EMS Professional. Hook me up on either uh, Twitter or Instagram. I'm at EMS Safe on both of those channels. I'd um, love to go ahead and hear from you guys and interact with you in these social media channels. Um, I enjoy doing them. I like putting out content. Some of it's educational. Some of it's opinion stuff about EMS. Some of it's stuff about my life. You get the picture. So go hook me up on those guys. I do something a little bit different on each of those channels. Guys, if you like this type of of knowledge building, building your knowledge base, right? Preparing to succeed as an EMS professional, whether you are brand new or whether you are a seasoned professional, it's always good to keep building your knowledge base, keep refreshing your memory on the stuff we need to know to make a difference out there and be good for our patients, which of course reflects on us and the agencies that we serve, okay? Um, if you're interested in that stuff, guys, I have TurboMedic right here. Um, TurboMedic On Demand is a online members-only content website. There are gigabytes of digital content for you to you can study and learn from. There's hours of audio and video. There's exclusive access to you a Facebook group there. Access to me and other content and stuff that we do there. In addition, of course, there are practice exams there, including the NRE SIM uh, uh, software, which is something you can use if you take a National Register exam. It kind of mimics the National Register exam where it will stop or stop upon certain thresholds of what you're scoring. 
Okay. Um, so guys, if you're interested in that, I actually have a trial membership available for you right now going on. You can go to emsseo.com forward slash turbo. And that will go ahead and get you to the trial page. And if you want to find more, more information about it on the trial pages, there's just a link there to go read all the stuff you get inside TurboMedic. So you can make a decision whether or not this is something for you. Okay. Again, it's emsseo.com forward slash turbo. All right, guys, that is it for me. Thanks for taking the time to watch this quick video. Next week is going to be part four. We're going to wrap up diabetes. We're going to talk about the hyperglycemic, hyperosmola, non-ketotic coma. That's a mouthful. Otherwise known as HHNC. Talk about that next week, guys. And I'm going to, that's a real quick presentation. I'm also just going to kind of go over some things you should always ask your diabetic patient and some key things to look for in your assessment that hopefully will guide you along that way when it comes to diabetic patients. So that's going to be next week, guys. If you have some minutes of your own, you want to see a presentation on something that you are passionate about in EMS or a topic that you're struggling with, let me know. Send me your suggestions or your inquiries. You can send it to me email. It's contact at emsofficehours.com, or you can uh, just leave me a comment here, DM me on any of those social media channels I mentioned, and I will get back to you and let you know if it's something that I can do, or have somebody that I know, another educator or something who's very proficient in that, go ahead and do for me. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks again so much. Have a great week. Until next time, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.